Well, hi. hi there. And you are? I am Sharon Byrne, and I'm running for city council. Okay, well, let's go. All right, let's go. So Larry, we're in my West Downtown neighborhood. And one of the reasons I wanted to bring you here is that Sharon the candidate would never have been born if I hadn't moved to this neighborhood. That sometimes in life, there are circumstances and collisions and occurrences that change your whole path. And this was one for me. I moved here in December of 2008 and I knew it was a bit rough. I knew that I needed to invest in a dog and possibly a weapon. Uh, uh, what, what part of town are we in? We're in West Downtown, which uh -huh. is two blocks west of State Street, um, below Carrillo Street. We're on Delavina, right at Haley. This is where I live. I uh, went out on a really bad date in February, shortly after I moved here. I got home early, and right where we're walking now, a boy that had been in my neighborhood for two days, two days, his name was Bartholomew Leal, he's 22, he was murdered by six people on this street. And we didn't know it, and no one realized that he was murdered, because what we were used to in this neighborhood is a lot of bar traffic, a lot of drunks, and we would find people sort of laying in our bushes or laying in our yards on a fairly regular basis. So to see a young man laying in the grass was not that unusual to us or laying on the ground. The problem was that he was a, he had, was a stabbing victim. And when we woke up the next morning, we were behind police tape and he had died here. And this is right where he fell. He, he traveled roughly a block north and fell here. And he laid here all night. There was no street light here. It was a pool of darkness. And none of the people passing through realized there was a young man bleeding to death. That woke us up. That was sort of the last of three violent incidences that all happened within this one block radius in a span of about three months. There'd been another murder on Haley and a shooting on my corner. And that was the end. The women in the neighborhood woke up. We all looked at each other and said, that's it. No one can live like this. No one can live in this much fear. So we put together the West Downtown Neighborhood March. It was done February of 2009. We invited all the people running for mayor to come, um, and they came, and it was great. We had about 250 people, and it gelled and united the neighborhood. And we said as our cry, we are West Downtown. What do we want? Safety now. Because of that march and the things that followed it, the whole neighborhood has changed, and now I think it's one of the best neighborhoods in downtown. So come on, I'll show you some more about it. All right, so here we are at the Haley Delavina Bridge, which used to be one of the darkest and most dangerous corners in all of Santa Barbara. And now you can look at it and see, after construction, it opened in April of this year, that we have street lights now. Mayor Helene Schneider helped us with those. The bridge is much nicer. There's more open space for pedestrians. It's not nearly as dangerous as it used to be. And it helped take this little neighborhood from blight to bright. This is the bottom of Mission Creek as it feeds out. This is one of the last stops it makes on the way to the ocean. And now this is a total neighborhood feature and you can see that capital improvement programs can do a lot to improve safety. So now we're in the Brinkerhoff Historic District. This is my friend Tony and Caroline's house, great neighbors. Um, and Brinkerhoff is a historic jewel in the heart of West Downtown. They were also some of the most active and organized neighbors in helping us take back this neighborhood. This is a, a preservation district. It's very special, it's very precious, and I'm very happy that it's here. So let's go look at the next stop. All right, Larry, now we're in a little bit of a different part of West Downtown. We're at the corner of Chapala and Haley, and the story here is about zoning and how zoning can help or hurt a neighborhood. In this beautiful building right here, the Alchemy Arts Center, which is a gorgeous cafe and spa, this was actually going to be a marijuana dispensary two years ago. And the neighborhood organized together and decided to stop that from happening. And actually, I'm really happy that we did that. It was a lot of effort, it was a lot of work, but look at the business that opened here now and how good it is for the neighborhood. Next door to it is Adama, a really awesome vegan restaurant. Across the street, is the Salvation Army Hospitality House, one of our best neighbors. They always let us use their facilities for meetings and they're very helpful to us. And then right next to them is a new body shop that just opened, Happy's. So here you have in one little block, what could have continued on as a very crime infested, um, very rundown neighborhood. Now you see, come on, please come. Now you see new businesses opening and you see people walking the streets and you see that there's a lot of life here. And I'm very happy that this is the way it worked out. I learned something from this, and that is if you have a safe, clean, healthy neighborhood, business can open and they can thrive. That's important. 
All right, now we're driving over to Milpas and you're riding in the mommy car. <laughs> I have a 14-year-old daughter who has just started Santa Barbara High School. And she's way too old for terms like mommy, but there you go. But we're on our way to my job. See, there's, uh, what's going on? I'll say the fire truck just passed us. We're at the corner of Milpas and Haley. This is a very common occurrence on Milpas Street. Um, we tend to be a high user of police and fire services here. And I'm going to tell you why in just a second. All right, Larry. Now we're in my office. Welcome to Milpa Street. This is where I work. I'm the executive director of the Milpas Community Association. And some of the work that I did in West Downtown, we're trying to replicate over here on the east side. We're at El Bahio. It's the best taqueria on Milpa Street. We got to go in and do a little work. So come on in with me. You have something with you there, right? I do. I have a thank you letter for a cleanup that we did this weekend, they donated. All right, this is Alicia, one of the owners of El Bajio. Alicia, I just want to thank you on behalf of the MCA for donating the tortas and the burritos to the cleanup this weekend. I think you saw it was a raging success. We had over 50 people and you helped feed all the volunteers. So I just want to say thank you on behalf of the MCA. You're very welcome. We love our neighborhood, so anything to help. <laughs> Thanks, Alicia. Thank you. See you later. All right, we're gonna go to the next place. Okay, we're rolling again. All right, we're rolling down Milpa Street under the 101 bridge. This bridge has been under construction for a year and a half. It finishes mid-2012. Um, I've worked with a lot of the businesses on Milpa Street to clean up various street corners, deal with crime problems that they're having. Um, the street faces two major problems. On the south end of the street, there's a, a large homeless population, and, and while certainly a great many of them don't cause us any problems, a small percentage do, and that tends to be problematic for the businesses and the property owners down here. On the north end of the street, there's more gang and youth violence and littering, and that tends to be the issue up there that we have to sort of work on. So we have two different focuses. All right, so Larry, we're here at Cabrillo Ballfield, one of the most beautiful pieces of real estate in Santa Barbara, right here at the ocean. And this is a particular success story for this little neighborhood, even though I'm picking up trash as we speak, um, in that it used to be a place where there was an awful lot of drug dealing and prostitution, and it was very hard to play baseball games here or have family events here. Now these fences that you see behind me around the dugouts, they went up in January. I was serving on the Franklin Advisory Committee when that happened, um, and we advocated for those fences to be here. And today, the ballpark is now used by families, by people in Santa Barbara. You see games here in the afternoon, soccer matches. That's the way it should be. I'm pretty happy about that. I'm not happy about the litter, though. I'm going to work on picking that up, and then we're going to the Cold Spring. Okay. Our final stop on this little tour is the Cold Spring. This is the place that I come to recharge and regenerate. We're in the heart of nature. We're surrounded by forest. We have beautiful running clean water. Um, for me, it's a treasure of the environment. And the best thing about it is, it's minutes away from the downtown core that we spent the morning in. Um, I hope that you've enjoyed this tour with me. I hope that you've gotten a chance to see the issues that I work on, the people that I work with, the fact that I understand how you can create prosperity for businesses and neighborhoods tied to clean, safe, healthy neighborhoods, how it makes it better for families, for children, for all of us that live and work here. And I hope I can get your vote on November 8th. And I want to thank you for coming with me. Okay, well, good luck to you, Sharon. Thanks, Larry.